Hi and welcome to another video brought to you by PLCGurus.net. So this is the third installment in our Studio 5000 Essentials video series. And today what we're going to do is we're going to look at how we can add or create logic and add tags, define tags in the, for that logic in the Logics Designer and Controller Tag Databases and Program Tag Databases for that matter. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to head over to the task folder here in the controller organizer window. So you can see by default, if we click on the plus sign here, we have defined a main task and this is a continuous task. There are three basic tasks that we can program in the Control Logic Studio 5000 environment. Those are continuous task. Uh, if I right click here, and you can see this is actually by default the continuous task. I can tell that by this little swooping arrow here, meaning that the CPU will scan this task and any program in this task continuously. And then if I go here, I can see I have a couple of options to create a new task if I wanted to do that. We're not gonna do that yet. We will look at these different task types later in subsequent videos. Um, but I just wanted to show you that we can have what's called a periodic task an event-driven task. So it's important that we understand the hierarchy and the structure that the Studio 5000 environment uses, okay? And so in each task, you can have one or more programs. So remember, the Control Logics, the Studio 5000 platform has really been structured in a way that lends itself to solve large, complex problems. And then in a program, you would have one or more subroutines. So you can see here, in this main task, main program, I have one subroutine called the main routine. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click this main routine. And you can see here now the logics designer opens and this will allow us to start building our ladder logic. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to the instruction palette here under the favorites tab and I'm gonna go ahead and select the XIC instruction or the examine if on or examine if closed instruction. So I'm just gonna drag that out and drop it right on my rung there. Did you see how I did that? Let's repeat that process. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this and you can see when I bring it into the logics designer, this little green dot that illuminates. So I wanna go ahead and drop it right there. So I'm just clicking, holding and dropping. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that a couple more times. And we're just going to build a simple uh, start stop type circuit. Okay, so I'm just adding some various instructions on. So I have a couple of XICs. I have an OTE that's going to be my output instruction. And I'm just going to do a little branch here. And I'm going to branch around here. And I'm going to add another XIC there. Okay, that's all there is to dragging instructions onto the Logics Designer area. So let's go ahead and create a tag. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click on this question mark and I'm gonna go new tag. And in the new tag dialog box here, you can see I have many options. And I'm gonna, I wanna spend a little bit of time here just to go through, at least scratch the surface on what these different options are. So let's go ahead and give our tag a name. So you can think of a tag as a variable name or, or as the Studio 5000 environment refers to it as a tag. So we're gonna give it a unique name. Um, we're gonna call this motor start and you can go ahead and give it a description I'll give it uh, motor start push button and now the usage okay so you can see we have several options here and some of these options are a little out outside the scope of this video but we will get into it in subsequent videos but for sufficient to say we're gonna keep it as a local tag okay so this defines a local tag or parameter tag. We will use local, okay? Now the type. Again, we have several options here that today what we'll get into are the base and alias types. Produced and consumed, again, are a little outside the scope of this video. But sufficient to say, a base tag stores a value or values for use by logic within a project, okay? So let's go ahead and create this as a base tag initially. And then data type. So there are a whole host of data types in the Studio 5000 Logics environment. I mean, there's just there's literally, you know, at least 60 I see here. And we can go ahead and create our own data types and in more advanced videos we will get into doing some of that. 
okay? But sufficient for now, we are using this as a single discrete on or off type instruction. So logically, it, it makes sense that the software would assign it by default a Boolean type. We can represent an on or off state using a Boolean data type, so a zero or one, okay? Now scope. I do wanna talk about scope here a little bit because it is an important concept, especially when you start generating tags, okay? Because it's not so easy to change the scope of a given tag uh, after the fact, okay? So scope defines how the data is accessed in the project. It is either controller scoped, global data accessible throughout the controller, or program scoped, data accessible for a specific program. Okay, so what does that mean? So if I define this tag, motor start, as a main program scope tag, meaning it's a program scope tag, because I'm defining it in under main program here, then this tag is only visible and readable and writable from within any subroutine only inside of this program, okay? Whereas if I define this tag as a controller scope tag, and that's given by the little processor looking emblem here, now my tag, motor start, is accessible from any task, any program within the entire controller project, okay? So I, have that, I hope that makes sense. I mean, it's really about visibility and encapsulating data and data access permissions. So good software engineering principles would say that you restrict your uh, variable access as much as you need to in order to at least do what you want to do, uh, but nothing more than that. So you don't want to make it global if it doesn't need to be global. But for the purpose of this video, we're going to go ahead and define our scopes as globally scoped or controller scoped, okay? So external access, so again, we can restrict, even at a controller scope level, whether we want this tag to be read or read or write, read only, or no external access at all, okay? Meaning an external application, say like Factory Top View Studio, can't read or write from it, okay? We have the style, so we want, we can define here the style to which we want the tag value displayed, okay? So we'll go ahead and leave that decimal. And then the constant, okay? So if checked, this tag cannot be changed programmatically. So we'll just leave that clear for now. So I hope that makes sense, okay? So let's go ahead and click Create. And that's it. We've essentially created a controller scope tag. So let's go over to the controller tag database now and just confirm that that is in fact the case. And there we go. We see our motor start tag. Uh, in our controller tag database. And just for completeness, let's go ahead and look at the local tag database defined under the main program. So every program is going to have its own local tag database. And if I click on that, there should be nothing in there because we haven't defined a program scope tag yet. So why don't we do that just so we can show you the difference. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new tag, right clicking, new tag. I'm gonna call this my motor stop. And motor stop, push button. And again, let's go ahead and define this one this time as a program scope tag. And let's click create. And now let's go over to our programs tag database here. So you can see now the motor stop button is in here, okay? so. And if you look at the controller scope tags, it's not in there. So I really want to drive home this whole scope idea because it is a little confusing for newcomers. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete this, actually, because we said we we're going to make everything um, controller scope. So let's just go ahead and to delete a tag from any database, whether it be controller tags or program tags, a couple of things you need to do. First of all, you cannot be using that tag anywhere within your program. And then once you've completely eliminated all the tags from use inside the logics designer areas or any subroutines that may be using them, then you would go into the applicable database and you wanna make sure that you have the edit tags tab down here selected. And you'll right click and just go ahead and delete the tag. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the main routine 
And now let's define that tag as a controller scope tag, like we set out to do in the first place. Motor stop push button. And I'm just tabbing through the various options here that we're not changing. And we are going to change this to a controller scope tag. And we'll click create. And now let's go ahead and create our output. And we'll call this, I don't know, let's call it motor run. And motor, we'll just say motor running. Let's call it a pilot light. Why not? Motor running pilot light. And we're going to go ahead and seal it in here. Okay, so you can notice how you can drag a tag name to assign it to a new instruction, which is a nice little feature. Okay, so we've effectively created a simple motor start stop uh, push button or logic here, sorry. But notice we haven't actually assigned any physical IO to this, okay? So right now we've just defined these as internal tags. So we could go ahead and save this project at this point. And let's go ahead and download it into our controller. So we'll just confirm using our, our, our who active here that we have the correct path defined and we do. And we can click, click download here. And it's going through and doing all its stuff that it usually does. And we can go into run mode. Yes. And we can go ahead and toggle some things on. Let's make sure our stop button is on. You can see it seals in. I can now re toggle this bit off. And because I've sealed it in here, it's the motor stays running. Okay, so I think that's enough for this video. Uh, I hope you found it informative. So in the next video, what we'll do is we'll look at how we can assign actual physical or in our case, simulated IO to these tags and actually use the uh, module properties uh, toggles to toggle these things on and off. Okay, so thank you for watching. Head on over to our blog site uh, and forum at https colon backslash backslash plcgurus.net. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you.